How does ontology help us understand what life is? Life is a word. What it refers to needs defining. Life is a term scientists, religious institutions, and philosophers have avoided defining. The reason for their avoidance of the task is fear. Each is afraid that if it defines the term life in respect to their particular area of perception, be it observation, science, faith, religion, spirituality, or logic, philosophy, then the remaining two areas will criticize the one that had the courage to define it. Is this paranoia? Hardly. Each area is struggling against the other in an attempt to evaluate, to elevate their own importance, just as we humans do. This is not an irrational perception. Defining something as important to us as life is too large a responsibility for any one perception, be it religion, science, or philosophy, to define on its own. In other words, no academic category is an island. The definition of life needs to be able to encompass all three means by which we perceive ourselves, faith, logic, reason, and observation. The lack of a definition for life creates problems in society that appear to have no solutions. The solutions presented are not based upon a definition of life because there is no definition as an example, the abortion issue appears to have no solution because science, religions, and philosophy have not come to a mutual definition of life. Until science, religion, and philosophy come to a mutual understanding, a consensus of what life is, the social dilemma of abortion will remain with us as will the social dilemmas of assisted suicide, religious con conversion of aliens, creation of artificial intelligence, cloning, fetal tissue research. Defining life is crucial to our development as individuals and as a species. Defining concepts is just putting the perceptions we have into words. Nothing can be proved to be absolute. Nothing can be proved to be. Even existence is assumed to be a truth, but remains unprovable nevertheless. We have little choice but to press on with existence. There is nothing depressing about this idea. We must recognize and accept the situation of our existence in our universe as what we perceive is happening and as such begin to deal with this concept by doing whatever is probably the most important task we have at hand. We must define what life is. What significance does ontology have to offer us as individuals? Understanding what life is in terms of our universe and in terms of where, where our universe as an entity lies will lay the foundation for what we perceive ourselves to be as individuals and explain why we exist within the universe. A philosophical definition of life will have to be broad enough to include our connection to the causative force or God, even if it means no connection, as in atheism. Such an empty definition, however, would undermine the basic fundamentals of all religions but atheism. The fear 
of such a definition developing out of a cooperative effort on the part of science, religion, and philosophy need not be a concern. There is no way such a conclusion would be able to gain the consensus of the majority of our species. It goes contrary to the beliefs of the world's major religions. It refutes the s refuses or refutes the stand of all most all renowned philosophers and it contradicts almost all scientific observations concerning the concept of beginning end formats within our universe. Then what of a definition of life? The definition of life could never gain consensus unless it acknowledged a causative force as well as our connection to it. This type of definition would do nothing but substantiate our significance not only in this physical universe but in terms of our connection to the causative force herself. A philosophical definition of life would have to be general enough to be acceptable to the vast majority of individuals making up the segments of religion, science, and philosophy, which would include the concept of a causative force, the essence of the individual, and the interconnection of the two.